1989, two amateur thrill seekers, 42-year-old Peter DiBernardi and 24-year-old Jeffrey Petkovich, want to become the first two-man team to tackle the falls in a barrel built for two. Though they're about to risk their lives in a claustrophobic chamber, they've only known each other eight weeks. Building a barrel big enough to safeguard two grown men is a tough test of engineering. You know, it just grew as to how you got to get in this thing and, and be safe with it for what your specifications are. The 12 foot long, one and a half ton barrel becomes the heaviest in Niagara history. The build team knows the barrel's weight will make it ride low in the water, closer to jutting rocks. They reinforce the four and a half foot diameter capsule with a three-layer superstructure of steel and strong metal mesh. But even the strongest reinforcements are no guarantee. In Niagara's pulverizing waters, impact with any obstacle can be lethal. In addition, the men hope the colossal construction can help them avoid the fate of one of the worst tragedies in Niagara history. In 1951, Red Hill Jr. rode a makeshift contraption he called the Thing, 13 inner tubes held together with canvas and fishnet. The flimsy barrel fell apart on the falls, the crashing waters and rocks ripping it to shreds. The daredevil's death was so gruesome, local lawmakers declared going over the falls officially against the law. But 38 years later, the law's no deterrent to Petkovich and Di Bernardi. Okay, boys, we'll see ya. September 28th, the day of their attempt. Spectators look on as a launch truck arrives with the behemoth barrel on board and the two men harnessed head to head inside. The 15 person crew manhandles the barrel into Niagara's treacherous waters. It makes swift progress toward the brink. The men audio tape the ride. They crest the falls in seconds. We're going down, Peter. We're going down. Then, calamity. The barrel slams into a giant jutting mass halfway down the falls. As feared, it's one of Niagara's erosion resistant rocks sticking out of the crumbling cliff face. Inside, the two men feel the shattering impact. We hit a rock, which is probably about the size of a house. My face had hit the top of the barrel, which would have been the actual, the lower hatch. I was cut all up in here on the inside of my mouth. The damaged capsule free falls, hitting the base pool. Water leaks dangerously into the punctured barrel. The men inside are in trouble. At that point, you know, there was so much water coming in, it was going all over your face. I thought that the water was coming in through the hatches. We got drenched and I'm soaked. I think it came to two by valve, Peter, big time. The team on shore struggles to drag the heavy vessel from the churning waters. Every maneuver matters. They had a grappling hook, so they, they grabbed the barrel with the grappling hook. We are okay. We are both okay. Yeah. 90 minutes later, the metal monster's at the water's edge, in time for Petkovich to carry out his secret plan for an unforgettable finale. I was there to do this thing naked. I had a cowboy hat on, a necktie, and I think I had cowboy boots on. After their rescue, authorities arrest and fine the two men. They're lucky to be alive. <laughs> Nearly two decades later, it's luck Jeff Petkovich and his family urged no one to put to the test. Would I recommend you to do it? No, I wouldn't recommend you to do it because I have two young children. I wouldn't want my kids to do it.